to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. O oh, may it all my pious engage to do my master's will. Dearly beloved, today is day seven of our penance, penitence, fasting, prayer, almsgiving, minus Sunday. This is the day of the Lord. Do not fast, do not weep. So it is our first week, if you like. And the church presents us with Jonah as a sign of God's will. We know his story. He didn't want to go doing the will of God because the people might convert. As a prophet, he wanted them dead. That was an evil tendency. It contravened the will of God that all will be saved. And you know what happened to him? He ended up in the belly of the whale. Then he comes out, saved by grace. God is so merciful. And this time round, he goes and proclaims in a day's journey, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And we are told the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then Tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, head nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. And let them cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows? God may yet repent and turn from his fierce anger so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, now they turn from their evil way. God repented of the devil, of the evil which he had said he would do to them. And he did not do it. Ow! How sweet the name of Jesus. The word of God is so powerful. Jesus means Savior. The word of God is that we will be saved. So this flows from yesterday's teaching. God says he has come to save us. He has created us for salvation, not to perish in hell, unless we choose it by our own free will. This is a nation, a very powerful nation at the time. You read from the beginning and you will know what it means. At the time, Nineveh was a powerful nation, a kingdom. And they went wayward from what the king is saying. They should change from their evil way and from the violence which is in their hands. Our nation, Ghana, probably we are worse than Nineveh. 
challenge me idolatry has taken deep roots in Ghana sexual promiscuity has taken deeper roots in Ghana talk of other sins robbery corruption wrong judgment false accusations covetousness huge abortion both christians and non-christians are committing them at will medical doctors whether catholic or non-catholic they are digging their gold committing abortion at will innocent blood being spilled on the land these are evil acts god keeps calling us the heart of jesus is bleeding Ghana was consecrated to the sacred heart of Jesus. And by extension, the immaculate heart of Mary. That's why Jesus says in the gospel reading for the day, Luke chapter 11, 29 to 32, that this generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign. But no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the men of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. It is true. You are looking for signs. A full generation. So, people men, false men of God. I know. I believe in few genuine ones. But many, majority, are false. Using occult spirits. To operate their church. And so they preach signs. You put your picture on a banner, on your car. Are you God? Come to me. I will do this. Come, last stop. Even women are doing it. Oh, what an evil generation. They are not listening to God. Christ is the sign on the cross. A sacrament, outward sign with an inner grace. We don't want to listen. We, want, we don't want to convert. Can you imagine if President of Bishop's Conference proclaimed this gospel to all politicians and all people, religious, in 2014, I wish of Bakel on, on 4th of July. It was a Sunday celebrating our Republic Day celebrations. He hosted the presidency, state officials. I remember. And he called on all and sundry to turn to the Lord. Let's imagine that when he pre preached this gospel, and the president would decree, as we hear, he himself would change first. And then his ministers. Then parliamentarians. The judiciary. And to trickle down to the last person on the streets. Changing our lives. But it's with bogus. We have hard hearted. We are hard hearted. 
We don't want to change. As a nation, we don't want to change. We don't want to fast. And unfortunately, in the Catholic Church, you see, I'm talking about fasting, and people, somebody will trash, but Hansen wants to project himself on us. He's imposing himself on us. Does Father Hansen have a spirituality? Isn't it spirituality called Father Hansen's spirituality? I'm talking about the people of Nineveh, pagans. They changed their lives. They fasted. He said, even animals should fast. Here are we. In the name of canon law, we go and say that, oh, you can abstain for if you take five bottles, take two, take three. No wonder the church is not making it even universally. Because you have been so liberal. Vatican II, we've not been able to implement Vatican II. Fully. We condemn our own. If we are celebrities leading us to, 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 to penance, making laws for us, will it work? It takes monks, ascetic men and women, to teach us. How can one who has become the face of Facebook teach you To deny yourself. One himself, who, who, who himself cannot go off Facebook for a day. How can he teach that we should go off Facebook for, for a month, for 40 days? How can one who likes to drink all year round whiskey, alomo, encourage that the daughter, the child, should not take Fanta in length? We are using our weaknesses to judge, to make laws. And that is our being as a church. If government will not, the church, we should. Then we can forcefully, and as we pray, the Lord will hear us. But I guess we are either like them or we are worse than them. And they know that we are weak. And so that gives them the power to do whatever they want to do. Conversion is a willful and thoughtful discipline that one must adhere to the laws of God. If this people in the Old Testament fasted, even the newly married couple had to fast, according to Joel, babies, animals, and Christ himself did it. We come and say that we... It is just twice in a week. Go and read the law very well. The history of fasting. It was the ordinary time period that the Jews fasted twice in a week as they converted Jesus Christ. It was the ordinary season all year round. Later on, ancient church, Christian church, made it Wednesdays and Fridays. Let's go and read our notes very well. Then it took a certain council, uh, certain leaders of the church to say, oh, let's make it only five days abstinence. So, canon law has been made. Human beings made their canon law. And usually these laws are made sometimes to suit the ordinary, the, the least person climbing. Like their father prayer given to us is the least we can do. We need to search on meditating and Contemplating beyond the vocal prayer. So the canon law is there to guide the least person, the weakest person. But for us to be mediocre in thinking that everybody must go to the same place of people living in the Kali church. Because I'm telling you, whether Christmas or not, these Pentecostals are fasting 40 days. And Catholics are going there to fast. It is working for them. It is working for them. 
21 days is from Lent. And they are doing it in their churches. And it's working for them. Catholics are going there. Now, carry people in the church, they also have their fasting, 21 days. They're learning from the Pentecostals, but come back into the church. You know, the Catholic Church led this crusade. Yes, yes, centuries ago. Oh, God, have mercy on us. We need conversion. So, just as the, the king took his cloak off, I'm calling on the highest authorities of the church, from bishops right down, maybe to priests, by the clergy. They have been given a special office. They have been consecrated. If we know there are problems in the church, in the state, let us be first to draw, to, to, to remove our clothes, to sit, in, to sit in ashes. Let us be first to be real with our conversion stories. Let us be first to deny ourselves, to detach from wealth, material wealth. Let us be first to teach about fasting. The positive effects, physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual. It is 40 days, as I read earlier from the, the preface. It is a period. It is not a day. Sundays, we fast spiritually the more and not physically. Yes. We need to convert. And it is related. Once we do the physical, the spiritual one will come naturally because the body will be weak and will depend only on God. Because we feel the physical pains, we will just have to soar high in spirit to God and ask for mercy. But as it stands, if I can't resist, I can't restrain myself from eating bread, from eating sausage, from eating fufu, how will I restrain myself when it comes to seeing a woman's breast so enticing? If a woman comes to spread open the thighs, how will I say no? If I see fast sums of money, only have to endorse, sign so that I will have my share, how would I say no? If common food, I can't say no to. I can't take myself away from food. If my phone, I can't say that in length, I want to put it aside. May the Lord help us. To imitate the king of Nineveh. Who armed with jealous care. As in the sight to live. As a servant of God. Prepared his street account to give. And the Lord had mercy on him. And on his people. Parish priests. Deans. Parish pastoral ch ch council chairman, societal leaders. It is time for us. It is not enough to say I'm a leader. It is time for us to lead the crusade. Let us go down in humility for our members to follow us. Peace and joy.